you know, we all got that friend in, in the toxic relationship that's continually going back to somebody that shows them time and time again that they're not good for them. And we criticize, we critique, we judge their partner, we judge our friend. Oftentimes we miss the fact that this friend of ours is a reflection of our inner dysfunction and the fact that we tolerate people who are full of toxicity and are not conducive to our growth, development, and the pursuit of our purpose and happiness. We miss that. But that ain't even what we're talking about today. We have so much judgment for those in front of us who return back to the toxic partners that they have connected themselves to voluntarily that tear them down from close proximity. But how dare you open your mouth and judge them for partnering with an external when you have partnered yourself with the one who has misled you time and time again from the inside out. Again, let's look at it. You've been abusing yourself all your life and calling it analytics, self-criticism, inner reflections. No, this is you harping on past mistakes. This is you giving illicit attention to things that you don't want to reoccur. And you cannot want them to reoccur all you want if you keep giving the water of your attention to that flower in the garden that you were given, it's going to grow. It does not matter how you feel about it. It does not matter how much you pout, how much you cry, whine, complain, how angry you get, how much you shut down. Look at how many 50, 60, 70 year olds that you know who are bitter and broken because somewhere along the way, somebody did something that they refused to let go of. They refused to alter their de definition of a moment. And that moment has altered their entire experience. I ain't doing it. You cannot follow your feelings. You cannot follow your thoughts. You cannot follow your thoughts about your thoughts. That's just how delusional we have become by the social program that we were given. You and I both feel like we can both become so focused on the inner conversation, the internal dialogue, that we can play judge to ourselves and spend all of our time marking our successions and marking our failures and coming up with plans to correct the failures while giving ourselves silent, short applauses on the successes. You're not a judge. A judge's job is terrible. Do you understand that these people do not shop in the same towns that they live? Nope. There's so many people that don't like the judge. There's the people that the judge sent to prison. There's the family members of the victims that the judge let off. They're you don't want to be the judge. But for some reason, you and I, based on the social programming that's familiar to the both of us, our first inclination in every situation is to get that black robe, sit ourselves on high, put the gavel in our hands, and command everybody shut up and listen to our definition or interpretation of the law. And that's crazy. That's lame. Because you know you're not that smart. Looking back, you know that there's a ton of moments that you avoid and that you've tried to erase and sometimes have successfully erased from your consciousness or subconscious mind. But you didn't try to erase it because it was so great or you performed so well. It's because in those moments, your flawed presentation was on full display. And the things that you say that you want other people to believe are not supported by those moments that you omit when you're giving an account for where you've been. 
But that's why people don't really rock with you when you talk about your successes because you always leave out your failures. You be such a real presentation, such a more relatable human being. If you at least talked about some of your failures, if you at least didn't pretend to never be wrong, if you didn't always backpedal, deflect, defend, and pretend that you were on the commendable end every time, People can see you. People feel you. Energy moves and it never lies. And there are some people who have ridded themselves of suspicion, ridded themselves of fear, ridded themselves of assumption, ridded themselves of projection. And it surfaces in moments. Don't get me wrong. Nobody has gotten to the point where they have eliminated all of these illusionary elements from their lives. A hundred percent. But you get to the point where you can identify the process that takes place on the inside before it ever erupts and becomes something tangible and physical to be observed by others. And you can make the adjustment. You can reposition yourself back in awareness of truth, back in that place of safety, back in your refuge. Back in your strong tower. <laughs> if you're going to be successful in the kingdom, if you're going to live metaphysically, abundantly, and joyously, it's going to require you being that of a child. You're going to have to return to your child-like state. So you've been adultish and childish at the same time. That's, that's actually easy to pull off in the society that we live in. Because to be an adult in our society is just to be 18 and have your own living quarters and your own car. And it's a ton of people who still operate on the level of children. As petty and childish as, a ch as, as children, when it comes to how they feel about things, their emotional stability, their social presentations. The respect that they're able to extend to others. The discipline that they have when certain inclinations rise, when certain impulses are bubbling on the inside of them. Understand, you're not so excited to say something that you are afraid to forget that you have to interrupt that person that's speaking. You just don't have any discipline or any listening skills to sit, observe, digest, analyze, process, and respond to the communications of another so that it can be truly said that you are having a conversation, so that it can be said honestly that you are communicating. No. What we are more familiar with is talking. We are, we are more familiar with coming and saying things. We say things that we've prepared on the inside of ourselves and gotten tailored to the to our liking. And we've even a lot of times overstep our boundaries and we write how we would like for the other side to respond or how we think they should respond. And if they respond in a way that does not suit us or it does not fit the script that we've written before we've started our production. We mad. But how are you going to get mad because somebody wouldn't let you write their script? How are you upset that you introduced uncontrollable variables into somebody else's story and they operated on the same premise that you did by introducing uncontrolled variables into your story? All you got was what you gave. Why are you upset? Better question. Why are you not upset? Or just as upset with yourself as you are with them. It seems like you just may be still blind to yourself. It seems like you may still be ignorant to universal law that says that everyone and everything in front of you is a reflection of what is inside of you. So before you open your mouth and before you share that meme, thinking that you 
talking about somebody else. Thinking that when you read that post or when you watched that TikTok video or when that person said that profound statement that you believe to be true because you could see it on somebody else. Please do not forget that anything that you can recognize belongs to you. If it didn't, you wouldn't recognize it. <laughs> Don't forget that. Because we argue with universal truths like that. We argue with universal principles like that. We argue with the laws that govern this universe that can be applied universally. If it can be applied universally, that means it applies to you as well. You are not the exception. And again, if we would be honest with ourselves in our assessments of ourselves, then we would get a better perspective of what it is that we've been doing that has been hindering our own experience in the physical. But that's what I mean to going back to being childlike. Even when you were a child, you probably were not childlike because most of us, I definitely can speak for myself, spent our childish years trying to be a, like the adults that we were mimicking and imitating in front of us. So even though we were young in age, we did things that we saw the people who were generationally ahead of us so that we could feel as if we were one of them. Because we've never wanted to be what we were because we didn't understand what we were. We did, we've never understood the gift of our identity. We've never understood the gift of the present moment. So we always spend our time in the present moment imagining a better moment or another moment to come or a moment from the past. Missing the gift of the present moment only because we don't know what it is. But we do know what our imaginations are or what we think they are because we're familiar with them. We know how we've used them. We know how we've interacted and engaged with our thoughts and our feelings. Even though they've been passing and fleeting, we've grabbed on to them and hung on to them and identified ourselves by them and made, our, made them a part of ourselves as long as we could. And the minute that they disappear, we feel lost for a moment. And then we go back into ourselves and find a new emotion and a new set of thoughts and spawn a whole new illusionary world for ourselves until it crashes. And we enjoy this process so much because, to be honest, it's the best thing that most of us know to do with the gift of creation that was instilled inside of all of us. You don't know how to use creation to your benefit because you don't know the benefit of creation. You don't know the benefit of the gift. You haven't even honestly settled in on the fact that you are the sole creator of your experience. You still argue with the universal truth that tells you such. Read it in a book, experience it in real time. And here you are with other theories and other imaginations based on your connection with fantasy and your partnership with your passing feelings and thoughts. Nobody cares. You shouldn't care what you feel or think is correct. You should only pursue what is, what is true, what is righteous, what is factual, what is reality. What is love? Because if it ain't love, it ain't real. R remember, the creator is love. And everything that the creator created must be an extension of the creator. Because who can create something that's not of its kind? Same goes for you and me. Why would I ever get it in my head? that I was anything short of created perfect, created love, righteous, whole. <laughs> if, if I'm broken, my creator is broken. 
I can't partner with no depravity. I can't partner with the cliches of religion that say that I am nothing until or without. Because why would you make it a cliche that I am nothing without God when the truth of the matter is God would never leave or forsake me? What's the benefit of holding on to such an ignorant cliche? Because it sounds good? Because it's familiar? Or because it's it soothes something that we think and feel. There are times when you think and feel that God is not with you. There are times when you think and feel that you are not worthy. Is that okay? What do you do? Do you repent? What is it to repent other than to turn away and go the opposite direction? back to truth I see the error in my ways in order to see the error in my ways I cannot be at war with truth I know I get it such and such stopped doing things they said they never stopped doing and so and so started doing things they told you that they never would because they understood when you said that they hurt you in the past You do understand that the only reason that you suffer is the ignorance that you have developed and operated from as it pertains to your identity and the universal principles and concepts that govern the physical plane that we exist in the physical a part of. Like we are such perpetual liars Accidentally, of course, because we be lying to ourselves, and we just be passing on the ignorance of our identity to other participants of the universal experience on the physical plane. But because we are such perpetual liars, we make it look like universal truth is not accurate. But it takes one who knows that universal truth is ultimate, meaning that it's always true universally to be able to read the signs. You did not and have not and will never lose anything or lose access to anything that you have not entertained imaginations about at some point living without. It just don't work like that. From your car keys to your dog to your wife. From human to animal to material, all of it flows with your inner expectations. All of it is dependent on your inner conversations. All of it is dependent on your subconscious callings. What it, What is it that you're magnetically drawing to yourself? Are you one of the ones who's talking about wanting to live peacefully and joyfully but is consciously calling conflict division and chaos from the inside see because oftentimes the presentation of ourself and who we have imagined ourselves to be are two totally different conversations and they're worlds apart because we operate on the surface as who we think other people would like for us to be. And we love to be accepted or feel accepted or be under the impression that we've been received. Because we've been such fear peddlers and such fear mongers, we have been under the impression at times in our life that we would lose access to people that we've never not had access to. Where did you develop the idea of losing access to your parent or guardian? Other than someone else, parental guardian transitioning and you imagining what that moment would look like or feel like or be like for you. 
You've been living by your imaginations and you've been imagining some really strange things. And then you found yourself in some awkward situations and then you've had some weird requests. Because now you're looking for someone else to save you. Now you're blaming some devil, blaming some God who's just testing and trying you in the fire. No, you have a mismanagement issue. You don't know how to think. You're still thinking about what you're thinking about, meaning that you're walking around talking to yourself about what you think you're talking about on the inside of yourself. That's to be ultimately distracted, yet that's what we call tuned in. I'm self-aware. No, you're more aware of the lies that are running rampant on the inside of you. You're more aware of the legion of voices that has haunted and tormented you from the time of your inner darkness. It does not matter what your sport of choice is. Without the reps and without the knowledge of the game, you ain't gonna win no championship. You're not you're not even gonna contribute to your team winning the championship if you don't know the rules. If you don't know the techniques of the game, the mechanics of the game, if you haven't put yourself in game like situations, if you haven't had experience in the game then all you know is these theoretical situations that you've pictured on the inside of you that you're calling to yourself. You're creating. You're never doing nothing. Sitting idle. Someone asking you what you're doing and you saying nothing. What's on your mind? Nothing. That's a lie. Right there in that moment, what's on your mind is the fact that someone just asked you what was on your mind. But we're not very transparent by first nature. By, by the social programming, we're very elusive. We're very deceptive. Hiding is very common in the ignorance of our identity. Because you don't understand that you're hiding from people who can't even see you. The person in front of you can only perceive you to be what they can define and they can only define you based on the things they know so whatever calculation they come to at the end of your interaction with them it'll be based on the fact that you are their reflection and what they have identified in you is what they can recognize from their own presentation and most people are so selfish and so wrapped up inside of their own presentations that even if they see you, they only see you as it is in accordance to them seeing themselves. They look over and see if your outfit is nicer than theirs, your car is nicer, your house is nicer, your kids are more polite, more well-dressed, more well-groomed. It's, it's just a big competition. And you're going out trying to engage genuinely and growing attached to people who are just in competition with you. But you don't realize how you've been in competition with them as well. You've just made being nice, being godly, being righteous, doing the right thing, being long suffering. You've made that strength, power, authority, a reason to Tilt your head a little higher in pictures and turn your nose up at them peasants. Understanding human nature is vital for a student. And you have to understand, you've been a student all your life. Nobody chooses to be a student. Nobody chooses to be a teacher. It is innately embedded in us. Every day you've been studying illusions or you've been studying truth. You've been studying lies or you've been studying facts you can devote yourself to one or the other sitting in the middle is to be devoted to lies because to be impartial with truth is to make truth unwhole and if it's unwhole then it's no longer truth and it is a lie a half truth is not kind of true is a lie the truth is whole. The truth is absolute. The truth is undeniable, unbreakable. It's an iron rod that does not move based on your perception, my opinion, your assumptions, or my miscalculations. 
Our thoughts can be misleading. The truth shall set you free. Who, who would you rather follow? Would you rather follow the one who is guaranteeing you a path to freedom, righteousness, peace, liberation? Or would you rather follow the imaginary, illusionary, non-real figmentation of your imagination? All out of familiarity. You've been walking around operating under confirmation biases, looking for the evidence that what you believe is accurate, is true, and I can find the evidence of it being true by sight. Understand the, the universal principles that govern your life must be followed by faith, not by sight. The only way to educate yourself on the beyond is to sit down and come back to the realization that you and I and all that has been witnessed on the physical plane originates from the beyond. Meditation sends you back into a remembrance of the original ancient way and from there you begin to unlearn and relearn who you are, what you are, and why you're here. Like, yeah.